How's everyone doing? Oh, you're all right. It's cold day. I'm back again. Um, like I always say, I always ask for my like people that subscribe to me and that drop comments and stuff and leave comments on my videos um, to, to give me subjects that they'd like me to do videos on. Um, yesterday, I did a, visit, a video um, on prison visits and stuff, and someone asked me to do a video um, uh, on veterans in custody. Veterans in custody, for those that don't know, veterans... Um, is a word that's used to describe people that have served in the military, uh, Army, Navy, Marines, uh, Air Force, all that stuff. <clears throat> um, because sadly, as you'll see at the beginning of the video, there's a quite a few statistics there from the Ministry of Defence and also um, I think the Ministry of Justice as well, um, that how many people that have served in the armed forces end up in trouble, <clears throat> whether it be violence, um, things like that. They end up in prison for various reasons because when you're in the army, you live in a bubble. Um, your rent's taken out of your money, your your electric, your food, everything's coming out so out of your money, and then what's left is yours. Um, and it's like when that bubble bursts, you come crashing down to earth. Um, and then sadly, lots of people that have been in the forces struggle with alcohol issues, depression, mental health issues, um, and end up homeless. Um, it's like a domino effect, if you will. Um, and sadly, that leads on to people that end up in prison. Um, the government do nothing to help these people, uh, to help veterans and stuff. I'm speaking as someone that served in the, the army. I was in the Royal um, Royal Regiment of Artillery, sorry. Um, so I've been in prison, I've been in the army, so I know both sides of the coin. Um, <clears throat> when you go to prison, they have what they call veterans in custody officers, VICs officers, as they're known. Um, you can request to speak to them at any time. Um, some are better than others, but they, they've always got um, a minute for you and stuff. And you can have a crack with them and the banter and everything else that comes with the army and stuff. Like you, you, if you was in a certain regiment and they was in a different regiment, you can have like the banner and take the piss out of each other. <clears throat> Keep your spirits up and all that stuff. They can also help you with advice and stuff. Gaining employment when you leave prison, accommodation, um, if you're going to be homeless when you leave, they'll point you in the direction of um, organisations like SAFA um, and the Royal British Legion, Help the Heroes and all that good stuff. Um, as soldiers, um, you're, like, you, you're pretty much like you're a chameleon, you can adapt to any environment. So if you are unlucky enough as a veteran to end up in prison, because it's regimented within the prison and stuff, the routine, the regime and things like that... Um, soldiers are used to routine and regime and stuff so they can hit it like um with a with a they can hit the ground running uh so to speak obviously no one likes being in prison and stuff but if that's the hand that's dealt you um as soldiers you're told you're taught to adapt and overcome um, and that's exactly what you do um like i say <clears throat> the government don't do anything for people that have been in the forces they they use you they put you in positions all around the world um Politically, they just use you, put you there and everywhere, put you in arms, like put you in danger. Um, if you're not in danger, you just uh, at your regiment and stuff. When once you leave, they, they, they don't do anything to help you. It's down to companies like um, organisations like SAFA and uh, the Royal British Legion and stuff. Um, I've been almost myself, and the, the the property that I'm currently in, SAFA, um, an army charity, they got me into this flat, um, and the Royal British Legion. Um, got me my white goods, my my fridge freezer, my washer, my cooker, and all that good stuff. So if it wasn't for organisations like the Royal British Legion and SAFA, um, chances are I'd be dead. Um, that's not an off the cuff comment; it's just a fact. Um, so these veterans in custody officers, they can help you gain employment within the prison. Um, they can give you help and advice, um, and it's like the buddy buddy system. Like they they keep your spirits up and stuff like that. The like. The VIX officers are people that, that, because within the prison service, within HMP and private prisons, um, a lot of prison officers are ex forces, um, and like I say, you never you, you never lose that like armed forces banter where uh, it's called black humour stuff where you, you have a laugh and stuff and like you're in a situation you just crack on and get on with it, um, and a lot of uh, ex forces go into the prison service as screws. And obviously the, the other lads that have got that develop problems and issues and become violent and aggressive and start drinking and get depressed and 
um, might have PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder and things like that, um, end up in situations where they end up in trouble with the law, that leads on to prison. And sadly, there are a lot of veterans in in the prison system and stuff. Like I said, I've been one of them. Um, prisons prisons are very, like I say, it's regimented, so you take to it like a duck to water. The veterans in custody offices, they're just there to speak to, to be honest. Like I say, they can help you while you're in prison. Like I say, gain employment within prison. Um, keep you like contact you like keep in contact with your friends and family um put you in contact with other people that have served in the forces um so that you can have that banter and stuff like that so if you've got two people on the same wing that like two lads on the wing might keep themselves to themselves this this uh, vix officer veterans in custody officer can put these two people that don't really keep themselves to themselves and say oh well he's ex forces he's ex forces and then you'll have the banter and stuff and the com camaraderie and that'll help you and stuff like that. And then once you leave, obviously they can put you in position. They can put you into like uh, accommodation if you're going to be homeless. They can put you in contact with external companies that can help you gain qualifications and employment. Um, so yeah, so so they are very worthwhile having within within the prisons and stuff. Um, the lady that helped me, um, she wasn't actually in the army herself. Um, her husband um, was her ex husband. Sorry, uh, served in Northern Ireland and stuff. <clears throat> she met him, she fell in love with him, I think she got kids with him, um, and then eventually their relationship broke down and stuff, but she's still a veterans in custody officer and stuff, she still she still knows the script and everything else, and still like had all the contacts and stuff that you'd expect of a veterans in custody officer. Um, <clears throat> that's as much as I can really say on veterans in custody. Um, like I say, the, the, sadly there are way too many veterans in prison, um, and yeah, the, the there's not the help for them from the government so it's down to people like the veterans in custody officers um military charities like SAFA, the broad british legion um help the heroes soldiers off the streets and all that good stuff so yeah <clears throat> but if you if you leave prison uh, i'll move on from that now if you if you're um ex-forces and you leave prison um contact ask the veterans in custody officer before you leave like in the weeks months leading up to before you leave to contact SAFA the external army charity there will be a, a SAFA that's local to you um, and there'll also be a Royal British Legion as well which is uh, which will be close to you because they're in every city pretty much town and blah 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 so they're always there to get hold of um, there is a new thing within the government and stuff now um, finally uh, what councils have rolled out and stuff where if you are a homeless veteran so say you've left prison you're a homeless veteran you turn up at your local count town hall with your bags uh, you tell them you're pretty you're homeless and stuff um and as a veteran you actually they can't well they can say it now for they didn't used to say it because of equality and stuff but now veterans jump to the top of the list over foreign immigrants illegal immigrants and stuff people that are seeking like uh, asylum here in the uk people that have got kids and stuff it said they take priority over them um, and rightfully so as well if you serve your country you should you should be getting housed before these people you you paid you, you paid your debt to your country um <clears throat> you've obviously you paid tax while you've e while you've even been abroad you still pay tax into the to the british um to the government and stuff so you should be looked after and rightfully so um, leading on to that, like I got housed within a matter of weeks, um, and I'm still blessed to be in the same situation. Um, and if it wasn't for SAFA and the Royal British Legion, um, and the how and the, the homelessness and stuff that helped me, uh, chances are, well, fact is, I'd be dead. Um, it's as simple as that. Um, I was sick of going through the rigmarole of the day in day out of being homeless and being looked down on and sleeping rough and all that bad stuff. Um, there are charities there to help you. Um, like I said, the Royal British Legion got me my white goods. Safa helped me get housed. <clears throat> um, and yeah, it's just a fantastic organisation and stuff like that. You should definitely seek them out. Even if you've not been in prison and you're looking at being homeless and you, you, you're in that position or even if you're in debt and stuff, speak to Safa, speak to the Royal British Legion. Um, you, just have, you just have to Google them. It's all there. And they're there to help you and guide you and there are fantastic organizations <clears throat> and like i said if it wasn't for me and I, I suppose many people like me um a lot of people would have sought suicide as a way out of the situation um that's a sad state of affairs but it, it's a very real um threat and it's a very real it's happening 
people, veterans are taking their lives every day across across the country um, because they can't deal with stuff. Once they've come out and stuff, the things are different. You Like I say, you live in a bubble, and when that bubble bursts and stuff, you come crashing down to earth. Some people deal with it better than others. Some people get resettlement. Some people don't. Um, and it's just a, it's just a, one of them states of affairs, to be honest. I mean, <clears throat> no veteran, to be honest, in my opinion, should end up in prison, but that's just the way it is. Um, it's happening. Um, like I say, they're struggling. The veterans are struggling with um, depression, family breakdowns, breaking down in family ties, homelessness, depression, anxiety, PTSD, alcohol, which leads on to alcohol and drugs, um, and other illicit, uh, illicit substances, and then that leads on to like getting in trouble with the law and stuff, feeding your habit, you turn to crime, you turn violent, you scrap, all the usual stuff that happens when you're in the forces and stuff happens when you're on the out. Um, I don't know what else to say to it, to be honest, so I'll leave it there, guys. Thank you very much. If you've got any comments, leave them below. Thanks a lot. Bye.